Hello everybody, this is Andrew here with the Robotus CS YouTube channel, and today I'd like to go over how you can use the Robotus Open Manipulator X, small uh, open source robotic manipulator arm, along with the Robotus Open CM 9.04 controller board, and the Open CM 45 expansion board, to create and then save custom motions to your robot using Robotus's free software, R Plus Task 3.0. So we're going to get started by connecting the open manipulator to the controller board and you can just use any of the Dynamixel connectors on the board that have the same number of pins as your cable. So we're going to use the three pin connector on the board here. And next we're going to supply power to the robot using the SMPS 12 volt 5, a 5 amp AC adapter and you can plug that into the barrel jack on the board and then use the power switch to turn on your robot. Lastly, we're going to connect the robot to your computer using the, uh, a USB micro cable, and that plugs directly into the controller. Alright, so here we can see that we have the Robotus Software R Plus Task 3.0 open already. Uh, if you don't have the software already, we're going to provide a link to the download of the software in the comments section. Um, so here's the home page of the software. Uh, to actually begin using your robot today, we're going to navigate to the Custom Project tab. And we're going to select the controller that we're working with, which is the OpenCM904. And now we need to connect our controller to the software. So to do that, we're going to use the button in the bottom left here that says Connect. And if your computer can detect your controller, then it should be automatically populated and you can use the Auto Connect button. If not, you might have a few different options you have to select through, and you will have to select it and use Connect. So we're going to use Auto Connect. All right. Now here we have a list of the joints in your robot that you're going to need to set up. So you can use the plus button to add joints manually to your robot, where you'll need to select the ID number, the model of the Dynamixel that you're using, and then you also have the option of providing a nickname to that joint. Uh, what we're actually going to use today is this button here, which will automatically detect the uh, Dynamixels you have connected to your controller. So let's try that now. Alright, so here we can see all of the uh, Dynamixels connected to our robot. So now let's proceed by clicking the OK button, which is the circle right here. Alright, so now this is going to take us to the main motion editing interface of R Plus Task 3.0. So let's go over the main sections of the software you're going to see here. Uh, along the top of the uh, window here, you're going to see a timeline. That's going to be how you can select moments in time that you're going to want your robot to move at. So the red line shows wherever you're currently selected. So let's start out and we'll move that back to zero. Next, you're going to see the window on the left side here shows a list of the ID numbers that you have in your robot, along with the current position of the, uh, of the joint in degrees. So here we can see that there's a column for 3D robot, which is what the software sees, and a column for the real robot, which is the current position of the actual robot you're working with. Next, we're going to go over the buttons that you're going to be using to control your robot. So here in the bottom left corner of the software, we have a few different buttons here. So the main ones you're going to be, want to become familiar with are this indicator here, the yellow Dynamixel symbol that says Torque On and then there's a gray Dynamixel symbol that says Torque Off. So in order to teach your robot motions by hand, you need to turn the Torque Off, in, which will allow you to move your robot. After you've turned Torque Off, you can turn Torque On to let the robot hold itself in position, and then you can save that motion to the software. So let's begin. Uh, when you, when you uh, connect your robot to the software, Torque will be on automatically. So we can see that the robot cannot be moved by hand. Now to fix that, we're actually going to want to turn torque off. But in order to turn torque off for the whole robot, we need to select all of the joints in the robot's uh, window here. So now let's go click torque off. And now we can move the robot by hand. So now let's select the first motion that we want to create with our robot. And let's pretend that this is the first position we want our robot to take. So let's go ahead and turn torque back on to let the robot hold itself in position. 
And now what we need to do is go back to the software here and we're going to need to update the poses of the robot with the actual pose that it's in. So you need to use the button here, read robot pose. So when you click read robot pose, the software is going to update uh, itself with the current positions of your real robot. Alternatively, write robot pose will make you, will uh, make your physical robot go to the position that is currently shown by th the 3D robot column. So what we want to do is read the robot pose to teach the software the position our robot's currently in. All right, now we can see all that column has updated. So now that we have the positions that the robot is currently in, we're going to save that at this moment in time. So we can do that by going over to the right side of the software and using this plus symbol to insert a keyframe. So every keyframe you create is going to be a collection of the motions that your robot, uh, or of the positions that your robot is at that current uh, moment in time. So now that we've created a keyframe, we can see the blue line here, and that represents the first keyframe we've made. Let's create another keyframe for our robot to have a second motion. So let's select another point in time. We'll make 1.6 seconds. Now we need to disable torque on the robot so that we can teach it a new position. Do be careful when you disable torque, because if you disable torque without holding the robot, the robot could fall and hit the base plate. So we're going to want to hold the robot, and now we're going to click torque off. There we go. All right, so now let's connect, or let's uh, move the robot to our next position that we want to move it to. Let's move it all the way forward, and we'll have it reach out. So now I'm going to turn torque back on so that it'll stay in this position. And I'm going to update the pose of the robot in the software by clicking Read Robot Pose. So now we can see that the pose of the robot has updated, and let's save that pose as a keyframe. So we're going to go over to the plus symbol and click it. So now we have the first position, and the software has created an arrow here showing that it's moving from the first position to the second position in the keyframe. All right, now the next thing we're going to do, let's create one last point in this motion for the robot to go to. So we have the robot starting on the side, and now we have the robot reaching forward. Let's have the robot move to the other side. So now let's disable torque again, and make sure you hold your robot when you do this. And we'll have the robot go here. So now let's turn torque back on. And don't forget to choose a new point in the timeline for this new motion to be at. So here we're going to have that be at three seconds. And now let's read the new pose from the robot. So you can see here now the pose has updated. Let's use the plus button to create another keyframe. And now we can see here that there are three separate keyframes we've created of this motion. So now let's replay that motion and test it to see if that's behaving the way that we want it to. So what you can use to have your physical robot replay the motion you just created is the button here called Sync Mode. So Sync Mode will have your 3D robot, which is the robot in the software, uh, replay the motions in, synchronous, uh, in sync with the physical robot that you're using. So let's click Sync Mode. And it's going to go immediately to the first position that you have, uh, or immediately to the same position in the timeline that you have selected. So you can see here, selecting different positions will move the robot. Now to replay the motions, let's press the play button here. And there you go, you can see the robot has smoothly traveled between all three of those points that we've set through to software. Let's replay it one more time for you to see. And if you want to check how your robot is moving in between poses, you can do that using sync mode by clicking different points in the timeline.
and that's how you create custom motions using R plus task 3.0 and the Robotus Open Manipulator X. In our next video we'll go over how you can download custom motions to your controller and then use those with the task programming function of R plus task 3.0 to replay those motions at command. Thank you very much for watching this video and feel free to like and subscribe to the Robotus CS YouTube channel.